Okay, welcome to week five. Let's take a look at the week five to-do list. Number one on your to-do list is your first quiz. Arguments quiz number one, here's the info and practice information for this quiz, is based on the first four modules of the Understanding Arguments Unit 1. You can start with this quiz if you're ready to go, or you can use the week to study for it and complete the homework as well and save this for last. You can complete this work in whatever order you choose. Probably makes sense to start with this before you add on additional stuff, but again, whatever you think is best. We are continuing to work on translating from English into our symbolic notation. We've been working on this unit for a couple of weeks now. This is our last week of translations. Our task for this week is to translate increasingly complex statements into symbolic notation and also arguments. Translating arguments into symbolic notation takes two sets of skills. You need to be able to analyze arguments using all of your unit one skills. You need to be able to identify indicator words, figure out what the conclusion is, and put it in standard form. And then once you have the argument in standard form, you'll need to be able to translate it into symbolic notation. So that's our sort of peak skill for translating. The homework has two parts. The first part is an auto-graded part, just like previous weeks where you get multiple attempts. And the second part is a short answer questions part. So you only get one attempt at this one and you'll be asked to answer four, I think, short answer questions. Translate two statements and two arguments from English into symbolic notation. We're also continuing to work on cognitive biases. We'll have a couple more weeks of this. Each week now, we're sort of focusing in on two specific cognitive biases. This week, we're introducing into our mix illusion of truth and fundamental attribution error, which is one of the most important biases that we're going to study. So we're not going to focus on just these two. Instead, we're adding them to confirmation bias and availability bias. So this week, there are four to choose from as you are answering multiple choice questions or doing passage analysis questions. And then finally, there's a week five check-in. So that's our overview of the week. Let's take a quick look at the arguments quiz. When you click on this, it's going to take you to this modules page and I understand it's confusing that we're calling all of these modules. I designed this material and called it all modules before we used Canvas and there's also a page called modules. If I could rename this, I'd call it checklist. So when you go to this link, it'll take you to the place where you get a checklist of all the things you've done. So for week five, you can complete your checklist and for arguments quiz, you can get green checks to everything you've submitted. Now one thing I want to highlight is that when it says complete all items, Canvas isn't the boss. I told Canvas that you get a checklist if you complete all items and also that you have to complete them in order. So you aren't required to complete the retake. That's totally optional. If you're happy with your first score, call it done. You won't get a checklist for it because you didn't do it, but that's okay because you don't need a checklist. Canvas is just keeping track of some stuff for you. This is only one quiz is needed for your actual course grade. To get to that, you need to read this readme thing and click mark is done. Once you've clicked mark is done, that's what opens up the quiz, which you can navigate to by going back to modules, or you can click next and that will bring you to the quiz. So finally, definitely read the readme. There's a practice quiz. The best way to study is to take the practice quiz like a real quiz and time yourself doing it. So you know what you're, how long it'll take you and won't be stressed out by the fact that there's a time limit. Um, academic integrity reminder, this is important. Quizzes are open book, open notes, open internet. You can Google all you want, but it's not your best strategy. FYI, when you Google, you have to know the material pretty well in order to identify what the good sources and examples are. And the best place to look is the tons of examples with solutions that I've given you and to practice. 
but feel free to use the internet if you want. The only thing that you cannot do, academic integrity wise, is use another human being in any way to complete this quiz. So no sharing, receiving, any kind of interaction with another human being, essentially. Okay, that's it. That's our overview of week five. So I look forward to hearing about how the first quiz went and how you're feeling about wrapping up the translations module in your week five check-in.